Hello everyone, welcome to our Sky Tonight program. My name is Seth Mayo, I'm the Curator of Astronomy for the Lohman Planetarium at the Museum of Arts and Sciences. And in this episode, we're covering the dates of February 22nd through February 28th. And what we'll talk about is the exciting Perseverance rover landing, which occurred successfully on Thursday, February 18th, of course, last week. So we'll talk a little bit about that landing and that mission. And then we're gonna discuss the moon and where that will be located for this week. And we're gonna look at a little planetary gathering going on in the morning that I think you might enjoy seeing. So let's get to it. As we continue to see Mars well-placed in our evening sky, as you see here, we can really celebrate that landing of the Perseverance rover, that new NASA rover that made it successfully to the surface after about a 300 million mile journey and taking almost seven months to get to the red planet to land and then look for past signs of you know ancient microbial life it's a very exciting mission and a very scary landing that took place i had a chance to do a live stream that afternoon the landing took place at a convenient time at about 3 55 p.m eastern time was the landing and i held a facebook live stream of the event which was a lot of fun a lot of people tuned in asked questions i could talk about what was going on and we could all share in the enjoyment and the excitement of this exploration feat and the landing is a very harrowing experience this big rover coming down with this very complicated sky crane maneuver as i mentioned in the last episode it's it's amazing so we watched that and soon after the rover took some of these wonderful pictures of the surface, here is one of the first images it took from its hazard cam on the side of the rover. And this is just a really, really early preliminary picture in black and white. Then the dust lens was taken off and we got the first color picture from the surface that you see here. It's an amazing shot and not the highest resolution image you're gonna see on Mars from this rover. And here's another picture of one of the rover wheels and some of the Martian surface. It's so amazing that that's an actual planet, another planet in our solar system. And even more exciting is this image here from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter that was flying over Mars and with its high-rise camera captured the rover as it was descending downward. And you can see the parachute there and the rovers inside that little capsule as it made its way down to the Jezero Crater. This picture is really cool. And this is from the descent stage above the rover, basically the jetpack that brought the rover down. And that jetpack had cameras underneath and took a picture of the rover just before it touched down on the surface. You can see the Martian surface and even some wisps of dust that were blown upwards from the rocket engines blowing downward and it's such an amazing picture. There's supposed to be some video and maybe even sound from this landing and it's gonna happen this week of the publication of this video. At the time that I'm recording this, that video hasn't come out. So the week that this video is published, you might have a chance to see that entry, descent and landing footage from the rover, which is really, really cool. And I'll show you where they landed. This is actually an image of the location. They landed in the Jezero Crater a couple kilometers away from the delta and it's pretty good they landed in a safe zone there are many hazardous areas sand dunes and rocky areas that the rover guidance system avoided it did it all successfully and autonomously because there's a distance between earth and mars and the light travel time one-way distance is more than 11 minutes so we cannot joystick this to the ground it had to be operated autonomously by the computers onboard perseverance and that all went smoothly and successfully so now engineers and scientists on the ground are kind of figuring out the first locations to go to they of course they have to make sure the instruments are working test everything get things booted up and eventually the mission will begin as a drive around looking at the surface of mars looking for that microbial life in the past that so will deploy that drone helicopter called ingenuity very soon actually and do all the wonderful things it's going to be doing on the mission so stay tuned maybe you'll see mars more in the sky as time goes on and it's fun to know we have a new rover on mars along with curiosity that's there still as well so we live in a great time where these things are happening 
Now the moon this week will transfer from the western sky where it was last week in the evening to more of the eastern half of our sky for this week. And if we just go back to the 18th for that Perseverance landing, it was really cool as I mentioned in last week's episode that the almost half-lit moon was very close to Mars that we see here. And here is a picture that I took, uh, just a simple image I took that night of the moon and you see a little speck to the right of the moon that's Mars. I just wanted to take a picture of it just to celebrate that the new lander was there and safely at its new home. And so it's kind of fun to take that. But let's move back to the 22nd here where the moon will be located on Monday. And at that point it will be in its waxing gibbous phase, so more than half full and located within the constellation Gemini, one of those winter constellations I've talked about before. Here they are, so right inside the Gemini twins. You'll find it there at the beginning of the week here. But as we continue to move on, as we get into the 23rd and then the 24th, and by the 24th, the moon's a bit bigger, and it'll be crossing a rather dim but fairly well-known star cluster. I'm gonna zoom in. Right now we're inside the constellation of Cancer the Crab, which is a bit of a difficult constellation to find, but I will trace out the stars for you of Cancer. So there's Cancer the Crab here, one of those zodiac signs, as you probably know. And right in the middle here is a cluster of stars. And it'll be too tough to see with the moon this close, but here is what's called the Beehive Cluster right here. And it's an open cluster of stars. So stars that are rather close in space but not super tightly packed together this is also known as Presepi, which uh, to ancient greeks meant the manger i guess it looked like a manger to them and today we call it the beehive cluster i guess it looks like a kind of hive of bees there's a lot of bright stars if you look at this through a small telescope or binoculars it fits easily in your field of view it's something that's about five or six hundred light years Away. It's actually one of the closest open clusters to us with kind of medium to old aged stars in this area. And something the moon passes by all the time, it lies kind of in the path of where the moon is near what's called the ecliptic. It's rather dim and again when the moon's there, you're definitely not going to see it. But I just want to mention it will be crossing that area inside Cancer the Crab that we see here and that's technically on the 24th on Wednesday. But let's continue moving through the week here and looking at where the moon will be located. We'll continue to the 25th, to the 26th. We'll just quickly move to the 27th, which is on Saturday. And that's technically the night of the full moon. You can kind of say it the night of the 26th or the morning of the 27th, but you can include the night of the 27th as well. And that, of course, is when the moon is being shined directly by the sun and it's opposite of the sun in the sky. So that means you can see the moon the entire night. Sometimes we call this the snow moon. It's a time of year when there's a lot of snow and there has been quite a bit in the United States lately. With all that cold polar air coming down and creating all that wintry weather. And so the snow moon is very fitting for this time of the year. So right at the end of the month, we have that full moon by the 28th, the moon will actually move out of the constellation. This is Leo the lion right here. And so the full moon will be inside Leo and then move just out of it by Sunday the 28th as we end the month of February. Now, if you get up early in the morning this week, there's a little planetary party going on in the east and kind of southeastern part of your sky, depending on where you live. And I just wanna set the scene here before I talk about these planets. If you're up in the morning at this time of the year, you can find summertime stars and constellations. If you look here in the southeast, right in this area, we'll have the very famous constellation called Scorpius the Scorpion, looking like a big old S shape in the sky. Not far from it is the teapot shape looking constellation, which is actually Sagittarius, the half man, half horse archer from Greek mythology that you find there. And those two constellations are very well known in the summertime in the southern part of the sky. Down here in Florida, we have a fairly decent view of them. If you go farther north, it might be a little harder to see them, but they still would be visible in some way. And then if you look more directly east on this side of the sky, we have something here called the Summer Triangle. These three bright stars that uh, really shine in the summertime, but in the early morning by the wintertime that we see here. 
But with all of that as a backdrop, if you look very low in the east and southeast down here, you're going to see what look like relatively bright stars that don't really twinkle. And these are three planets. I like to call this like a little planetary party going on in the early morning just before sunrise. These are going to be very low, so if you have a very clear view of the horizon, that will definitely be needed to see this but they are going to be rising a bit higher and higher as we move through the rest of the month so let's zoom into this area and take a look at what planets are located here and the one a little higher up this one right here is the planet saturn of course the one with beautiful rings around we'll zoom in real quickly just to take a look at the planet here in a little more detail there it is with its rings you can see some of the moons here and this is the moon called Titan. It's the largest moon around Saturn, second largest in our solar system. Saturn has about 82 moons. I think it's the current count. There are probably more, but that's what's been discovered so far. So that's pretty neat. So there's the beautiful gas giant Saturn, second largest planet, of course, in the solar system. Now, closer to Saturn is this planet right here. This is Mercury. We mentioned Mercury quite a bit a couple episodes ago and Mercury moves very quickly in the sky. Now by the 23rd, actually Mercury will be the closest it gets to Saturn in this time right now. So if we move on to that date on the 23rd, it'll move just a little closer, all right? And so that's the closest separation we get, all right? They're not super close, but again, that's when they'll be nearest each other. And then not long after, it will start to descend downwards. But there is that little planet Mercury, the smallest planet in the solar system, the one that looks very much like the moon. It's very gray and dusty. And here you can see it going through phases, just like the moon does, okay? Since it's a planet inside the orbit of Earth, and it moves really, really quickly around the sun. So you see this thing kind of jet around, while Jupiter and Saturn move very slowly, their orbits are big and they move very very slowly around the sun so they don't really change position in the sky too quickly so as i said mercury will be kind of moving downwards after the 23rd here getting closer and closer to get through the rest of the month here see how it's kind of narrowing the gap between mercury and this planet down here as we get to the 26th and 27th we're getting closer and this planet right here as i kind of mentioned is the planet Jupiter, the largest, most colossal planet in the solar system. We'll, we'll zoom, of course, into this planet as well. Get a little closer just to get a better view. There it is with this gaseous bands across its atmosphere. And here you can see the four Galilean moons, which you can clearly see even through a small telescope. They are great. And Jupiter is uh, pretty big, 10 times bigger than Earth. You could fit about 10 Earths across the face of Jupiter. It's a massive world and one that's fairly bright in the sky, usually the second brightest planet that you can see from Earth. And so we can find these planets kind of dancing around, especially Mercury kind of really doing most of the movement as it nears Saturn on the 23rd, then loops back around, going closer to Jupiter. And by the beginning of March, you'll see it get closer and closer for a really nice conjunction we'll talk about in next week's episode in a little more detail. So get up in the morning, take a look potentially at these three planets, Jupiter, Mercury, and Saturn. They're gonna look like fairly bright stars that don't really twinkle, or at least not twinkle as much as the stars do. And they're really nice if you are up in the early morning. Hey, that's it for another edition of our Sky Tonight. Thanks for tuning in. And if you're ever in the area and want to visit Daytona Beach, please stop on by the Museum of Arts and Sciences and, of course, our Loman Planetarium. We are running shows every single day. We're doing them safely, and we'd love to see you. If you're around in town, come check us out. And also, we hope that you tune back in to our weekly Sky Tonight videos. We appreciate your support and for tuning in. We really love making these videos and sharing the wonders of the universe and exploration like that Mars Perseverance rover landing. A lot of great stuff going on. So with that being said, take care and happy stargazing.